Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another action RPG series video for my Godot action RPG series. This is a bonus or follow-up video, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fix the bug related to the collisions with the bats and invincibility, because there's a bug there that you guys mentioned. And I'm also going to be showing you how to put a limit on our camera here so that it's limited to where it can move to. As a disclaimer, I do not have any other plans to make future videos on this series. This is a bonus video that I decided to make basically this week. I don't have plans to make anything else to add to it. Some of you have been requesting uh, menus and traveling to different rooms and stuff like that and inventories, and those are things I want to cover in separate videos that are not connected to this series. I do want to cover topics like that, but they're going to be separate and not connected to this series. So you can then try and implement them in this series if you want, but this series was meant to be small from the very beginning. I didn't want it to be a complete guide for making an action RPG. I didn't want to talk about everything that goes into that. I wanted to cover just the basics. So there's the disclaimer out of the way. Uh, because I know you'll be asking in the comments, so I wanted to say that. So let's get started. The first thing we need to fix is this error right here. So let me show you guys what happens. If we get two bats chasing us, right, and then we run into them at the same time, both of them can damage us. And so we can take damage even though the invincibility has already, we already have invincibility. With one bat, it works, but with two, it doesn't work. Now, if we look up our hurt box here, hurt box, open up our hurt box scene, come into here. I'm guessing that that it, for, for some reason monitorable doesn't work for that. And a few people said suggested maybe using monitoring, and that didn't seem to work either. Uh, at least from the testing that I did, maybe I did something wrong, but I did find a solution that works, which is disabling the hitbox similarly to how we do with the sword in our animation. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting access to our collision shape on ready. Collision shape here. Get access to that. And then we'll use Collision shape got set deferred, disabled, and we want to set it to true because when we get hit, we want to disable our collision shape. And then we'll set this one collision shape disabled equals false. And we'll set it to false inside of here. So when we get hit, we set disabled to true on our collision shape. After the invincibility is over, we set disabled to false. So we re-enable it, right? And this solves that issue that we have. So if we get two bats chasing after us, can uh, run into them at the same time and only take one damage. And it's now working properly. Okay, so we got that bug fixed and out of the way. Let's figure out how to limit our camera. Now, if you come into the camera right here, you can see that it already has a thing called limits here. And this is just the limit of the camera. You can see it defaults to negative whatever, whatever, is that a million? I can't, I can't count the zeros right here, 10 million maybe might be 10 million, it's hard to tell how many zeros there are. Yeah, it defaults with this massive limit on it, right? And trying to manipulate this, um, you could do that, right? So we could say, okay, we wanna do like negative 500, right? And then maybe do 500 here, 500 here. And then test that see how far we can go 500 is way too big apparently try negative 200 
and test this. Do we ever, oh, and you can see we're hitting the bounds of the camera now. So we're hitting that limit now. The camera won't move past that limit. However, trying to manipulate this right here in the editor is a huge pain, right? So I have a better solution. We're gonna take our camera and we're going to do save branch as scene and we'll just save our camera out here. And if we come into our camera scene here, and we'll want to set the transform to, let's see, 320 divided by 2, and 90, which is 180 divided by 2. That just gets it right in the center of our room here. Uh, save. Inside of our world, it won't update because it's still, like it won't change because it's still attached to this remote transform, but that's okay because that's what we want. So in here, we can actually use two nodes in order to represent the top left and bottom right limits of our camera. So let's add some nodes here. So we'll do a position 2D. Now a position 2D node is basically exactly like a normal uh, a node 2D, except that it has these gizmo extents and you can see it in the editor. So that's the difference here. If we can select our position 2D node and move it up here, let's turn on snapping actually. Okay, we can move it up here. This one will be top left. And we'll make another one. Duplicate this, we'll call it bottom right. Okay, and we'll put uh, this one down here at the bottom right of our view, and this one up here at the top left of our view, like this. And this one's position for bottom right, we'll set its transform to 90. So that's right there at the corner, okay? Easy enough. However, there's a problem with this. If we move our camera, you can see the boundaries move with the camera, and that's not gonna work, right? So how do we make these children of the camera without having them update their position when the camera moves. Well, there's a little bit of a, I guess, a trick to this. I don't know if this, I'm guessing this is intended, like this is a good way to do it, but I don't actually know for sure because I just kind of figured this out on my own. So we can create a base node, make sure it is just a node, not a node 2D. This right here doesn't have a transform. So it doesn't have a transform property. It doesn't have a posi position in our room. And we can call this limits, okay? And we can take our top left and bottom right. We can make them children of this node. Now, they're actually, where's, where's our top left? Okay, it's up there too. Now when we move our camera, the limits won't move with it. You can see they're not moving with it. And that's because they're children of a node that doesn't have any position. And so it basically, every child node follows its parent, but this kind of breaks the chain. And so then it no longer has those children follow the parent. And that's what we want for this, because then we can use them. And so here's what we do. We save, we create a new script for our camera, and we come into our ready function here. And all we're gonna do is get, well, we'll get access to both of our top left and bottom right, right? Top left. Bottom right. And then we just say limit top equals top left dot position. dot y limit left equals top left dot position dot x limit bottom was bottom man I'm really struggling with typing today this isn't the first time either limit Bottom, let's see, right. Position.x. 
There we go. So now in the ready function for our camera, we get the position of our limit, our limit nodes here that we've set, and we set those to be uh, the actual limit properties for the camera. And honestly, a cool feature in Godot in the future, or maybe even a plugin, would be some sort of a camera property that would allow you to, like a little but a little um, a little button up here or something, where you could click it when you're in your camera, and then it would create limits that you could drag around in your room. So you could do that. But you know, Godot is uh, powerful enough that we can just extend this a little bit ourselves and make our own system for that. So now we can close out of both of those, come into our world, right click on our camera and do editable children. And then we click top left, which is gonna be over here now. And you're gonna have a problem, which is look at all these nodes right here at the center. If we try and grab our camera and move it, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get our top left node. However, there's a shortcut where you can hold alt, the alt key, and that will make sure that when you select, it selects the node that you have selected over here in the scene. So if we select top left and then hold alt, we can then drag this and move it. And we'll turn on um, snapping. We can put that exactly where we want to. I'm gonna put it right there in that corner. We can come down here and get our bottom right. I'm gonna hold, let's see, bottom right. Grab that, put it maybe there. And so now we've got a, We've got these visualizers for the limits on our camera. We can save the game and run it. And now our limit is set to exactly where those nodes are. And you can see those limits work really well. If you want to limit your player's movement, then you're going to have to use your, you'll have to use either your collision, like your cliffs like this, do something like that or you'll have to it's interesting I didn't know there were those dirt path tiles there let's get rid of those or you'll have to make your own uh, collisions which you could do you could just create a big static body and and um, add some collision shapes to it here put it on the world scene or the world layer add some collision shapes to limit your player's movement that way. You could make some static bodies and limit the player's movement that way. But we're just trying to limit the view with this example, and you can see that this works quite nicely. We're able to limit the view to those boundaries that we set. And that's going to be it for this bonus video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be making more videos next week. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment down below for the kind of content that you would like to see. Obviously not for this series uh, because of the disclaimer that I gave. I don't have plans for continuing this series, but for any other type of videos that you would like to see, let me know in the comments below and I will see what I can do and I will talk to you all later.